Okay. I'm gonna do this instead. This I haven't done before. So even though it's a very similar question, it involves the same um, strategy, same approach. Once again, it's I think uh, there's some benefit to seeing the same approach multiple multiple times applied to different situations. It hopefully reinforces um, kind of consistency in approach. That's why that's why I like to call it standard strategy, as if it's the only strategy out there. Um, um, anyways, um, yeah, sorry. I, I had something to say about standard oil, but I think most of you are way too young. I am way too young to know anything about standard oil. Anyways, so this is the question. Um, this question actually has um, uh, three objects here. There's the tugboat pulling stuff, and there's a barge here, and there's another barge here. And uh, I guess let me give them labels. This is going to be M1. This is going to be M2. So it says, the two barges shown here are coupled by a cable of negligible mass. The mass of the front barge is, uh, oh, yeah, that's M1 here. And mass of the rear barge is this mass here. Very light for a barge, isn't it? A tugboat pulls uh, the front barge with a horizontal force of some magnitude F. And I think that's all we need to know about the tugboat. Uh, basically, any other details about tugboat doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing we need to know, if, so even though it looks like there are three objects in this uh, scenario, there's actually really only two objects we care about because once we know that the tugboat is giving me this um, applied force, tension force, then that's it. That's all I need, one need to know. Um, okay, so there's that. <laughs> and the frictional force of the water on the front and rear barges are, okay. So I need to deal with these two different friction forces. So let me label this F1, that's for the friction on the front barge. And I think on which barge it's acting, that does matter, especially for the determination of tension. So I'm, that's why I'm paying attention to respectively and being careful not to put it with the wrong uh, object. Uh, second friction force given is F2. All right, uh, it says find the horizontal acceleration of the barges and the tension in the connecting cable. Good. All right, so I think we are ready to apply standard strategy. I wonder if I can save some space. Uh, there's that big white space that uh, I'm pretty sure I don't need. We'll start by applying standard strategy. So the question already gave me a diagram, so I don't need to draw a new one. I just uh, need to draw the free body diagram. So let me draw the free body uh, diagrams. Uh, this time there are two diagrams because I have two objects in the system. This is the thing to remember about free body diagram. You draw one for each object. Um, there's also the technique called the whole uh, system reasoning, which um, can be used as a shortcut. Like if you just wanted to find the acceleration then you can use the whole system reasoning to have a shortcut. But I think if, uh, um, let's see, I will leave it as an exercise for the student to work out the shortcut. And let me do this the long way, because one, that's uh, going to be a consistent strategy you can apply every single time, even though sometimes it could be more work than you have to do. That's one reason. And two, um, here you actually do need to. To find out tension, you have to uh, look at individual objects, not just the entire system. So uh, let me draw the free body diagram for mass one, M1, and mass two, M2. Uh, Location-wise, they're kind of swapped from where they are on the diagram, but that's fine, I'll just keep them separate. So um, now there are some forces on M1 and M2 that I think I'm going to ignore this time. So I've been so far drawing, always drawing gravity and normal force, or this here, I guess this would be buoyancy force. 
But um, I don't think any of these give me um, useful information. It's uninteresting. It doesn't relate to anything. So I'm going to just ignore the forces in the vertical direction because I don't need it. I have all the horizontal information I need without bringing in these vertical forces. So uh, let me just draw the horizontal forces. <laughs> um, on M1, the front barge, there are two forces, two horizontal forces acting. There's the applied force F, and then uh, there's a tension force pulling it backward. Kind of consciously trying to draw them so that they don't appear to be the same length. Uh, and, but you know, if you happen to draw them to have the same length, that's fine. It's not a big problem. Um, it's, uh, it, it's not a big problem. It, um, the, um, um, as long as you know in your head that the arrows with the same length is don't necessarily mean that they are the same magnitude. Um, all right, so I drew these forces and I always ask this question to myself. Did I draw all the forces? And looking at the question, going back and forth. Oh, um, I didn't draw the forces. There's the friction force. So I need to draw the friction force. It's always a little bit tricky when you have multiple forces going in the same direction. Try not to overlap them so that I can see that there are more than one force. <laughs> All right. Um, so <laughs> once again, did I draw all the forces? And at least on M1, I think I drew all the horizontal forces. Okay, let's move on to M2. Then uh, there's the forward force of uh, uh, friction, tension, pulling it forward. And then uh, there's the friction, uh, pulling it backward also. So F2. And um, now I'm going to do a check that I haven't been doing so far. And I haven't been doing this check because so far I have had only one uh, free body diagram. When you have only one object, then you don't end up needing to do this check. Hopefully you have some idea of what check I mean. The check I'm talking about is Newton's third law check. You need to do this check every single time whenever you have more than one object in your system. So I have more than one object in my system. I have two objects that are interacting with each other through this connection here. Then I have to do Newton's third law check as in for every force, is it an external force then I don't have to worry about reaction force pair. Or if it's an internal force, then is there a reaction force pair? So let's, let's get started. Uh, uh, I will first highlight all the external forces, forces that I don't, don't have to worry about. They apply the force F, that is an external force because it's applied by the barge, it's outside my system, not barge, uh, by the Talk about and it's outside my system. Then um, frictional force. Is it an external force? Yes, it's an external force because it's being applied by the water, which is outside my system. Now I have tension. Is there an external force? And this is where I hope you realize, oh, that is not an external force. The tension on M1 that's being exerted by the, well, by through the cable, by the, uh, the rear barge M2. So this is a, uh, uh, this better have action reaction force pair in your set of free body diagram. And the reaction force pair to that is this tension here, which is being acted on by mass M2 by the mass M1. So, uh, all right, so good, they are paired up. And in fact, I, because I kind of knew that I used the same letter as I was labeling it. But if I didn't identify this earlier, then I shouldn't have used the same letter. Um, so, so, um, so I guess to spell it out, Newton's third law check and, um, and make sure 
same label is used for action and reaction forces. This way, when you read the information of the diagram and write down Newton's second law equation, um, the forces that you know are equally magnitude from Newton's third law um, do end up having the same symbol, so it's all automatically enforced. All right, let's finish this up. I have one more force, F2, friction force. Uh, that's external force that's coming from the water. So this is Newton's third logic. It's easy to forget, um, but when you have more than one free body diagram, please remember to do Newton's third law check. And um, uh, note how long of a time it took for me to finish drawing this free body diagram. Part of it is me talking and explaining, but um, if you didn't slow yourself down and keep asking yourself the question I keep asking a lot, it's very easy to skip some of this and forget some of this. And if you have wrong free body diagram, sorry, you're out of luck. It doesn't matter how well you do the remainder of the steps. You're, you're just going to get it wrong. So, <laughs> so that's why I spent, I think I spent like 10 minutes on this, right? Um, <laughs> to draw this free body diagram correctly. The good news is uh, once this is done, then uh, step number four, well, uh, I have steps two and three, but here it's kind of simple. So step number four is just a matter of reading the information of the diagram. Let me kind of uh, do the pro format step number two and three. So it's a one dimensional problem. The only thing I really care about is what's the positive x direction. Let's say that's to the right. And there's no components to break down. It's a one dimensional problem. All right, now I'm ready to write uh, Newton's second law equations. So net force. Um, I guess I have only have one direction, x direction, along the x direction, uh, but I have two objects. <laughs> so I still have two equations, but it'll be net force equation for barge one, and then net force equation for barge two. So net force on barge one is equal to, I'm reading the information of, from the diagram, the positive x force, the applied force F, minus the negative x force, tension and F1, minus T minus F1 is equal to mass times the acceleration. And uh, hopefully here you realize that acceleration of the both uh, barges are the same, so I'm just going to use one label for acceleration. Okay, net force um, on barge two is equal to they note that there's no apply the force directly on barge two. There's only tension. So tension minus F2 is equal to M2A. And I think this is the, uh, wait, uh, I jumped the gun a little. Okay, so this is uh, end of the standard strategy. Uh, Newton's second law equations. Newton's second law equations. Let me count my equations and my unknowns. Make sure this is solvable before I start solving them. Equation one, equation two. Let's count the unknowns. Uh, apply the force, known. Tension, unknown. Friction force, known. Eh, what am I Tension, unknown. <laughs> Friction force, known. Mass, uh, mass, known. Acceleration, unknown and uh, same tension, acceleration, good. Okay, so this is the kind of question where I think both the band and the portable TA might be recommending you to do the linear combination, which is fine strategy. There's actually a kind of a telescoping effect that kind of makes things nice. But um, let me use a substitution, just as a way of, like, it's a brute force kind of way. It's not the smart way or it's not the, uh, most streamlined way, but it's a method that always works. And I think there's some value in consistency. So if you feel comfortable doing linear combination to eliminate tension and solve for acceleration, that's fine. That works, that's great. Um, but um, if not, then follow what I'm doing with the substitution. So let me do this first. Solve equation two. I want to solve for acceleration first, just because. So let me e solve equation two 
for tension, not acceleration. Because by wanting, if I want to get the value of acceleration first, that needs to be the quantity I solve last so that I can work out actual numerical value. So let me solve equation two for tension. Then, uh, oh, I just need to move the friction term over. So I get tension is equal to M to A plus friction. All right. Now note how I have an unknown acceleration on the right hand side. So I can not actually plug in the numbers and get a value for tension. That's not why I solve for tension. What I, the reason I solve for tension is to plug equation three into equation one in order to eliminate tension. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, in order to eliminate tension. Um, so F minus, this is what I'm plugging in here, M2A plus F2 minus F1 is equal to M1A. All right, now I need to finish the remainder of the algebra. I have one equation and one unknown, so I have to collect the like terms and then solve for that, I guess, like term, term A. So, um, so I need to move M to A over to the other side. Uh, let me write down that intermediate step here. So after having done that, I should get apply the force F minus F2 minus F1 is equal to M1A plus M2A. And I can factor out acceleration to get M1 plus M2 times A. And I can solve for acceleration by dividing through by M1 plus M2. Then I get A is equal to F minus F1 plus F2. I'm just collecting the friction terms together. Divided by M1 plus M2. And everything here is uh, has a known number, so I can plug it in to get a numerical value for acceleration. And then uh, once I have acceleration, then I can just plug in the numerical value here to get tension. And um, um, yeah, so this is all solved, uh, plugging numbers, that's your job. <laughs> um, one thing to highlight, uh, the answer we get here, it represents an answer that you could have gotten by using whole system reasoning. Because what you see on the numerator is the total net force, apply the force acting on the right, the two friction forces acting towards the left. And then you divide it by the mass of the entire thing that gives you acceleration. But so if you wanted just the acceleration, you could have done that. But what you have remaining that you have can fi find out from that is the tension. And the only way to get this e expression here is by writing down this system of equations, which comes from treating the two objects separately. It's because you know tension has to do with the interaction between those two objects. If you put them all in one system, there's no way you can get to that. 